Hello YouTube, this is a deck profile for my deck that I've been practicing with in real life. It's Plant Tengu with Chaos Sorcerer instead of Achaeus. And here is the main deck. We have one glow up bowl, spore, dandelion, two lane fire blossoms, and that's the plant engine of the deck. Then we have two debris dragon. Three Reborn Tengu Two Junk Synchron Two Double Warrior Two Raiko One Lila Card Trooper Sorry about the Sangan Two effect veilers. Only one chaos sorcerer because I added an extra effect veiler instead of the extra chaos sorcerer from my dual network deck. I'll explain why. And ghouls. Then onto the spells and traps we've got spells. Mind control. Dark Hole, Giant Grenade, Two Mystical Space Typhoons, Monster Reborn, One for One, Foolish Burial, Charge of the Light Brigade, Reinforcements of the Army, Two Pot of Avarice, and one allure of darkness and then for traps there's not not many traps but just the staples there's solemn judgment two solemn warnings there's call of the haunted torrential tribute and limit reverse before I go into detail about why I picked those cards for my deck. Let's talk about some of the uh, variants that you can go into. Now there's my deck plays Chaos Sorcerers, but people can play two Kais instead of them, or they can play one Kais, one Chaos Sorcerer for the best of both worlds. Now I prefer Chaos Sorcerer over Caius because Caius has the drawback that it uses up your normal summon for the turn but its advantage is that you can target any card on the field whereas Chaos Sorcerer is a special summon so I'm saving my normal summons but I can only remove a face up monster they both fit into the deck well because they're both dark monsters and they're both level 6 which once you get them onto the field, you can then start using them for Synchro Climbing or for Chaos Sorcerer food if you're running Chaos Sorcerer. And also the darks for the allure targets. But it's mainly down to playstyle and preference whether you want to run Caius's or Chaos Sorcerers. Normally people play Caius because they do want to remove one card on the field they're having trouble getting rid of. But I prefer using special summons up because for this deck it really hinges on you being able to land a debris dragon or a junk, so junk synchron onto the field to go for black rose dragon or hyper librarian so I'd prefer to use in my playstyle anyway I prefer to use up my normal summons primarily for those two cards junk synchron and debris dragon but there's also the uh, tour guide variant where they use two tour guides, one Sangan, and what they're doing is they're gaining advantage by filling the deck out with tour guides, 
plus they being able to use the tour guide for synchro material and if they tribute off the the uh, Sangan for a Caius then they're also filling out the deck searching for key components of their deck but that deck doesn't really run Junk Synchron or Debris Dragon it's kind of it's in the same grouping as that deck like Plant Synchro but they don't use the same components like Junk and Debris they use Caius's and Tour Guides instead anyway you also have the Cyber Dragon and Card Trooper, so it bumps up the machine count in the deck along with Unknown Synchron. So you can run a Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon in the extra deck or in your side deck. So if you come against Machinas or Karakuris, then these are good card options. And an extra card trooper is good because you can use its effect to thin the deck out, mill things, so you can feel the graveyard as well. And it's got a low attack of 400, so you can fish it back out with Debris Dragon or Limit Reverse. But there's already so many cards in the deck that help you mill. I'm finding that only one card trooper is enough because I'm <laughs> generating so much card advantage with Hyper Librarian. I don't feel the need to run two card trooper to draw into that extra card. I shouldn't normally need to. And then we have the variant with the TG stuff in it. Now, TG Striker is good because its effect is like Cyber Dragon. If your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. Also, all of these TG cards, they search each other out. So during the end phase of the turn, this card on the field was destroyed and sent to the graveyard. You can add one TG monster from your deck from your ha from your deck to your hand, except TG Striker. A War Wolf is the same. In during the end phase of the turn, this card on the field was destroyed and sent to the graveyard. You can add one TG monster from your deck to your hand, except TG War Wolf. TG War Wolf is good in that it's a dark monster. It's level three, and when a level 4 or lower monster is special summoned, you can special summon this card from your hand. And it combos really, really well with this kind of deck because you special summon from the graveyard, you special summon from your hand, you special summon from the extra deck. It's, there's so much special summoning on that. For example, if you dropped, say, a Junk Synchron, revived a Raikou or Doppel Warrior from the graveyard, you can drop this as well. So that means you've got level 3, level 4, level 5, plus this is 8. If you've got tokens on the field, you can go for Trishula. It just gives you a wide variety of levels, so you can go for anything in your extra deck, basically. And TG Striker is good in that it's a warrior as well, so it's a target for Rosa. It's a level 2, so you can fish it back out with Junk Synchron and it's a tuner so that is a good combo but in playtesting I found that it's the deck is slower than the one that I'm running now because it relies on these special summons sometimes you'll draw into hands where you have only got one or two components and you're ending up having to set them and if I have to set the card, I'd rather have a Debris Dragon with a defense of 2000 than something with zero. Although I am searching back out, the Debris Dragon normally should stay on the field for another turn. But anyway, I tried that variant. Some other cards that people can play if you don't have access to some of the other power cards is... This card is very good. This card fits into the deck as well. It's uh, Elder of the Six Samurai. and this card isn't Six Samurai specific in the sense that it's got a Cyber Dragon effect. If your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. It's an Earth monster and level 3, which is good because you can then run cards like Barkian and Natura Beast in your extra deck to add that. Well, what's the word? that area of control to the deck that it doesn't normally have but yeah this is a good card then you've got things like 
dimensional prison and enemy controller. Because this deck generates so many tokens through Dandelion, Doppel Warrior, and it's also got weenie monsters that once you've used up a couple of times like Bulb or Spore, you can fish them back out with Limit Reverse or I don't know, uh, Junk Synchron, Debris Dragon, and you can trade off one of their monsters for your used up monster and then you can just synchro away or attack with it. It's a very good card in this deck but normally I end up using it defensively instead of offensively and normally the cards that I revive from the graveyard I want to use them anyway and I can get rid of the threat on the other side so I don't run this but you can in this deck. Right, just quickly on to the extra deck. This is just something I've thrown together. It's got Book of Moon in the side, two Forbidden Lance, Dark Armed Dragon, because there's a lot of dark monsters in there and I can manipulate the graveyard quite easily. It's a game winner. There's a third Raikou, two Puppet Plants. I've been testing with Zephyros and he is a good card and there are some nice combos with him but he's not a main deck card and I might take him out the side anyway because he's useful but not he's not absolutely essential in this deck I've got kinetic soldiers because I really don't like sex samurais it's a cyber dragon for machine cards I side in mirror force because normally in game one if we go through a long game then my opponent will realise I don't run Mirror Force and then he'll think alright fine this guy doesn't play Mirror Force at all and won't expect it in game 2 or game 3 and then I've got 2 Jane Disappearance because Frog Monarch Light and Darkness Dragon is a pain in the bum and I sight Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon just in case someone's playing Karakuri or Machina that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 cards. On to the extra deck. I've got two Formula Synchrons, one Armory Arm, two Tech Genus Hyper Librarian, Troll Face, uh, Bryonic. Iron Chain Dragon, two Black Rose Dragons, one Arcanite, one Stardust, one Scrap Dragon, Colossal Fighter, Trishula, Shooting Star. I like getting Shooting Star Dragon out, I'd admit it. It's a really good card and this deck can pump it out quite easily, but it's not essential. Neither is Colossal Fighter now because of the uh, Armory Arm Colossal fight ruling. Arcanite Magician is a yes at the moment because once I've cycled through and used up Hyper Librarian, I can use Librarian and one of the level tun two tuners to go for Arcanite. And I can get level two through bulb and spore and a token or something like that anyway. Um, the only reason I run two Formula Synchron is because I've got two Pot of Avarice in the deck. Once I've cycled through these two, I can revive them so many ways through Junk Synchron, through Debris Dragon, through Limit Reverse, Monster Reborn, so many different ways or I can cycle them back into the extra deck with the Pot of Avarice as I mentioned. Iron Chain Dragons in the deck because they run debris and it's the only level 6 dragon monster. It's got a decent attack anyway, but normally I'll be using that to synchro up to something else. I don't run Catasta because I've been running Colossal Fighter, but I'll probably switch this out now because I'm finding that I need more level 5s so I can synchro climb and I'm only ever getting out Scrap Dragon or 
Stardust as the level 8s anyway. Those are the only two main level 8s that I want to get out of this deck. And Stardust I'm only getting out really because I can then go synchro with that. So I can get Shooting Star out. Shooting Star Dragon. So good. But anyway, that's the extra deck. I'd probably swap something else out as well. And if I was taking it really seriously, then I'd probably swap out the Shooting Star Dragon for another Trishula. Because Trishula is so good. This deck pumps out Trishula very quite easily. Normally, I've got such massive advantage that even if I do lose this to a solemn warning, I can recycle it with part of Amaris. Or if it gets removed from play, then I've normally got so much advantage again that I don't care. But if I was taking it seriously, then I'd probably run two Trishnas. And finally, my namesake, these are my tokens. I use them for Doppel and for the Dandelion tokens. Right, for the in-depth analysis, we'll do this card by card. So, working from the beginning, we've got the plant engine. So that's Glow Up Bulb, Spore, Dandelion, two low fire blossoms. Lone fires search out each other, they search out spore, glow up bulb, dandelion. So if you start with this, it's amazing because you can search for any component to set up the combo for the next turn. And it also your opponent knows you're playing a plant engine and he's either got to remove bits from the graveyard, wasting cards and resources that he should really save for later and you're generating a lot of advantage because you're filling out your deck you're putting things in the graveyard that you know you can recycle glow bulb can be used twice spore can be used twice dandelion is just abusable with everything in this deck and then lone fires once you've used them up you can recycle them in the part of avarice or you can just use them remove them for the effect of spore so plant engine is core of the deck I'm using two Debris Dragon because like I said I tried it with the TG element of that deck and it didn't really work out for me. I like I preferred Debris Dragon now because with Dandelion, which is the main target for it, you're constantly going for tokens, Black Rose Dragon or Trishula and it's got a high defense so you can set this if you're desperate because the tokens that you generate with dandelion are also wind if your opponent plays goes and match or stuff like that tokens are wind as well and you can go into a stardust if you have enough wind wind types so you'd have to have a couple of tokens of the field already but you would have done that anyway because you'll be cycling through with these two cards Debris Dragon also searches out that from the graveyard and this from the graveyard and this from the graveyard <laughs> so he's a winner the only drawbacks is you have to go for dragons but like I say I've got Iron Chain in for the 6 and then there's Trishula 9, Stardust and Scrap Dragon for the 8s but that is a must in this deck now. Reborn Tengu it has a decent attack. You soak up Solemn Warnings, some Judgment, Bottomless Trap Holes, Book of Moon, anything. This card is just ridiculous because even if you have two in hand, you've got one left in the deck, you can keep cycling it. And it's a psychological advantage if even if you do have a sh really, really terrible hand of having three of them near the beginning, you just set one, and then your opponent thinks, right, that's either a Raikou, Sangan or something, I've got to get rid of it, remove it from play, and you've used up one of their key cards, and they're powerless then to 
stop you from going off with, say, a debris dragon or spore into something else. And even if you do have these two in hand, you can still use them. There's, it's not useless. You can still summon them, you can set them, you can use them as discard fodder for Branic. So, if you do get three in hand near the beginning of the game, don't cry like a baby. Don't start saying, oh my god, you stacked my deck. It happens, so get over it. Junk Synchron. Junk Synchron in this deck is primarily to get Librarian out. This is main function, Librarian. He's also a Dark, he's got low level 3. You can't search for, you can't get these back out from the graveyard really with any of the other cards in this deck apart from Monster Reborn, but then you, these are the targets for Pot of Avarice that you'll be recycling back into the deck along with the Synchro Monsters. If you can get this in hand and either Rota or Sangan or whatever for Doppel Warriors, then you have a very powerful combination there. You go Junk Synchron, you can fish out a Tuna, or you can fish out Raiko, and go into Librarian, or if you have tokens and spores and stuff, you can go for any different combination of Synchro Monsters as long as you just have them in the deck. He's a warrior as well, and he's rotable as well. So, Rotor in this deck has many, many targets. So, he's a must in this deck as well. Doppelaria, I played two. Three is too many, it'll clock your deck up. He's warrior level two and dark, so he's curse sorcerer food. He generates tokens. He's got low attack, so you can fish it back out with junk synchron. You can limit reverse it. It's called the haunted. You can ditch these into the graveyard with foolish barrel as well if your hand is already loaded up with spore, glow up bulb or lone files or whatever if it's quite late game and you draw into a late foolish burial you should know that how many of these you have left in the deck so you still have targets for foolish burial and he's good to dump into the graveyard for things like one for one or branic stuff like that and every time you use him for a synchro summon you get two tokens and they're warrior type dark as well and They've got a small attack, so if you're really desperate and you can synchro summon for a librarian, then use the two tokens and attack with 24 for 800, 800, and no, sorry, not 800, 400, 400 for the tokens, and that's free too. Sometimes that'll get you game. This is the Light Sworn engine in the deck. I play Lila because she's got a decent attack of 1-7, so you can ram her into the last Tengu if you have to. She helps mill cards into the graveyard, so she's filling the graveyard, and she also pops back rows, and if there's one thing this deck doesn't like, it's anti-meta or decks that set a lot of back rows, like Gravekeepers can go set spy, set 4 or 5 back rows, so you summon her and she just soaks up everything and she's target for a charge of light brigade. She's also light and that's chaos food. I play, only played two Raikos, I found three was too many, I, I don't even want to play two in this deck. Three is, the third one's taking up space for a power card like Effect Veiler or I don't know, card troop or something if you're playing different variants. Two's enough, three targets for a charge of light brigade is fine. You may find sometimes that you're milling these into the graveyard early game, but again, these two cards, you can fish them back out so many different ways, it doesn't matter. Lila is just primarily for getting rid of stars and traps, but she has other utilities like you can remove her later on in the game. I only play one card trooper because, like I said earlier, I've got loads of ways of drawing cards, and going for one more is just greed, basically, and there's enough greed in this deck. He's a uh, level 3, uh, you can pump him up, fill the graveyard, you draw a card when he's destroyed, he's good, you can fish him back out with uh, Debris Dragon, 
so one swine in this deck. Sangan gets you anything to hand basically from this deck. Effect Veiler, Card Trooper, Raikou, Dop Warrior, gets you Junk Synchron, gets you Debris Dragon, Dandelion, Spore, Bulb, pretty much the whole deck apart from the big guys. So he's dark as well, you can remove him from play for a lure if you're really desperate but normally he stays in the deck or in the graveyard and he's really awesome when you use him for food for Trishula because you're taking up to three cards away from your opponent and you're getting to add another card to your hand so you're replacing the card that you have used um, to effect Vela because a lot of decks now rely on effects like if I'm playing at six samurai I re if I've got like a trench tribute or something, I really want to negate Shien and get rid of it quickly because I do play a lot of spells. And if they get an early Shien, I really need to get rid of it. Or if I need to protect a target from Caius, Chaos Sorcerer, if I need to negate a Raikou because I'm protecting monsters or spells or traps on my field, and he's a light monster, level 1 tuner. He's a target for a one for one. He's all good. You can do run one in the deck, but at the moment I'm running two because in my local meta there's a lot of decks like Six Samurai, D Fisher Samurai. I really need to get rid of all those cards. So I need to protect, say, my face down Raiko for the next turn so I can pop the D Fisher. Or I need to protect my spells and traps. So I need to get rid of Chien, Caius, Chaos Sorcerer, I can stop a Debris Dragon, Junk Synchrom. This has so much utility and synergy with this deck. So a minimum of one, but two's good. I play one Chaos Sorcerer. I should play two really, but uh, there's nothing else I really want to take out of this deck. Apart from possibly an Effect Veiler, but I'm finding the Effect Veilers are more useful now. Chaos Sorcerer I run over Kaius because as I explained earlier, I don't like using up normal summons. I can special summon as many cards as I want, but you only get one normal summon per turn, and normally that's the game push. So I'm soaking up all their back rows, Solemn Warnings, Bottomless Trap Holes, Dimensional Prisons, and using all my special summon monsters to get rid of all their back rows, just so I can go off with a Debris Dragon or Junk Synchron. And I feel a lot of people forget that they get obsessed with I need to get rid of that monster or I need to get rid of that one card. This deck has a lot of utility, it's kind of like a toolbox in that you can search and summon monsters that can deal with every single threat that your opponent has. So you can get rid of back rows with Raikou Lila, you can synchro summon into Trishula, Baronic, Scrap Dragon. So I don't really have a huge fear of back rows and I don't really have a huge fear of monsters so I can get rid of monsters with this but some people in different areas they prefer Kaios over this but personal choice and then Gauze Gauze is a lifesaver not only is he dark he's level 7 so when you get him onto the field normally you're using Spore and Bulb to go into level 8 the token that he generates is a light level 7, so if you can get the gores and then the token onto the field and then they stay on the field then potentially you have two level 8 monsters coming. He's dark so he's chaos fodder, he's got a decent attack so gores stops OTKs as well. So he's a staple. Some people play Treasure Odia, which is okay but gores is superior in this deck. Then uh, spells, I've got draw power, a lot of darkness, I can lure away cards if I'm really desperate. Sometimes you will have really bad hands and you can dig your way out because you're getting rid of cards like Doppel Warrior which aren't that useful to you early game. You might have a really titanically bad hand of free Tengu, one Doppel Warrior or something and you need to dig deep into the deck. It's good anytime during the uh, game because you're always going to be hopefully drawing cards with Hyper Librarian so you're drawing to cards that you won't need so you can just lure them away and draw into other good cards 
play two pot of avarice just to maximize the chances of me being able to draw two more cards i'll be loading up the graveyard so much that these are always live except for possibly opening hand but they're always good and reborn tengi once you cycle through them and use one of these it makes your opponent want to puke reinforcement of the army it searches for a lot of the deck uh, it searches for double warriors junk synchron uh, searches for i've forgotten now If you were playing the TG variants, then it probably used to be able to search for those bits as well. But that uh, is a good card. If I get it late game and I've used all the targets up, I should be able to have a pot of efforts I've been holding onto for a long while, recycle the targets, then get the uh, rotor. So it's never really dead. And I set it as a bluff because people might think it's a uh, mirror force. Child Light Brigade fills the graveyard, searches out for Lyda or Raikou, depending on the situation. So it's a good card. It's never been dead for me. I know people can draw into it once they've cycled through <laughs> their whole deck. They've used up by part of Avarices. But to be honest, you shouldn't play that badly. <laughs> Charge of Light Brigade is good. Uh, Foolish Burial, just send anything you want to the graveyard. Early game, you can go for Dandelion. Mid to late game, you can send a Bulb or Spore or anything that you need to fill those two cards or anything you need to fill the Junk Synchron or the Debris Dragon or something for a Chaos Sorcerer if you're desperate so good card one for one the targets are Blood Bowl, Spore and if you're really really desperate then one of the Effect Veilers which is another reason why I run two Stay Card Monster Reborn just get anything basically game winner I play two mystical space typhoon just to get rid of back rows so I can start combos off normally in this format not many people will load up their back rows if they do then they know they're going to either telegraph they have solemn warning solemn judgments in which case I'll do everything in my power to get use those all up with all the special summons I have in the deck but sometimes there's cards that you really want to get rid of and you've run out of options and this little space ice cream just blows them up. Giant Trenade is normally, I save this for when I'm going for the game push. So I clear their back rows, any field cards they have, and go off from there with Debris Dragon, Junk Synchron, whatever. Dark Hole Clears Field. Mind control because I'm running so many tuners that sometimes I want to get rid of something on their side of the field or I don't have the necessary components for going into attrition or something and they do so I'll just take whatever they have and synchro it away. Lastly the trap lineup is quite standard. Solemn judgment negate everything, solemn warnings negate summons, call the haunted to revive anything Trench Tribute to clear the field. I don't run Mirror Force because I don't really care where the cards on my side of the field go. And to be honest, most of the cards I'm setting or have on the field, they belong in the graveyard anyway <laughs> because I can always revive them or recycle them. So Trench Tribute for me is better than Mirror Force. In a way, this deck thrives on you using up your monsters to bring out more and more advantage with the synchro monsters while loading graveyard up and every time you're clearing your opponent's field and yours you're clearing your field so you can keep cycling through the combos uh, lastly there's limit reverse which any monster with 1000 or less attack so I'm going for tuna monsters or tuna food for synchro and that's pretty much the deck hope you enjoyed that and I know I've gone a bit. Enjoy.